there is this point, looking at this question, market produced goods, and this is the decisive point of relevant is the inclusion into the market production. Whatever the quality is, it doesn't matter. And then you can have these absurdities that somebody actually messes around after somebody came, you paid this person for cleaning, it may be, there may be more dirt than there had been before, but you pay, and this is the decisive thing. Now there is one, if you want a detail, meaning you have to be careful reading exactly the formulation, the question. And if you go back, what you find, it is as well going back to what we have been talking about before, namely Murray, and the problem of general increase. The formulation does not say somebody goes to work, takes up employment, and instead of doing it himself or herself, employ somebody. If you look at it, it is simply saying, for example, so the cases are different as well, busy people with high incomes, they have it already. It's not that they take it up their position is unchanged and they go for this option of getting somebody to clean. If it's different, somebody takes up this work or actually both take up this work, one gets a good well-paid job and then employs somebody, it is growth as well but it is not a general growth. So read exactly what it looks for, what the question is, and then try to figure out what actually happens. As I said, as well, look exactly at the direction. If it's a slow, steady development, if it's an abrupt change, whatever happens to And this is important if you look at the reality as well, at what is going on here in China over the last, or in, in, the, in the most recent period. We will come back to it, but at first glance at least, there is a major shift when we look at the GDP, uh, GDP development. So the paradise for a carrot-eating rabbit. And the question is, what happens to these carrots? Of course, little bunny wants to have all for himself, but actually not too much for this little animal. And these animals are not grown for the rabbit anyway that they are grown by a farmer on the farmyard. And this means they are sold on the market. It's not the rabbit who steals them, but it's selling them, producing them, and selling them as market-related activity. In this case, it's granny can be somebody else who buys it and makes carrot cake out of it. Can play the thing with apples and whatever, making apple cake, doing something like this. But the question is, what does this actually mean 
when we are looking at GDP, at the relevance of this process for the overall economic process. And there you come to another dimension of GDP I mentioned. This is the final product. And it is very obvious that if Granny gets the carrots from the farmyard, buys them directly from the farmer or on the market, in order to make a uh, carrot cake, it is not the final product. Carrots are not the final product. The final product is carrot cake. Of course, making carrot cake is hard work, believe me. And it doesn't automatically, you have to work. So, they would not be part of the GDP, because they are not going into the final product. First, Granny has to go, get the carrots, has to make the cake, then you can come and see, she says, here's the carrot cake, enjoy it. And the carrot cake is the final product. But, Granny gives it to you, just enjoy it. Don't pay me. So we have a little bit of problem. Apparently, the, the carrots disappear. They're not part of the GDP relevant process, but they are because they are bought from the farmer, so they are going into it. So we are safe again. But the world is full of problems, believe me, because this carrot cake is simply great. Now you say, Granny. From now on, I come every day and I want carrot cake. And Granny says, nah, we have a problem. I have other things to do with my life instead of making every day a fresh carrot cake for you. But actually, we can make a deal. You give me 250 per piece, and then you can have the, 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 the carrot cake. I sell it to you. Now the carrots apparently don't go, again, still don't go into the final product, or they, they go into the final product, but they are not the final product. But now we are not dealing with this part, farmyard, but we are dealing with the 250 for the carrot cake you paid to your granny. Right? No right asking this way means wrong. Because because Granny doesn't have a business. This is, if you want, exchange. The first is subsistence production, giving you the apple cake. This is exchange, and you have to give her the 250 every time for every piece. But this is not her business. It's private exchange. It's not part of the market. She doesn't register this now as base bakery, pastry shop, granny so-and-so, providing everyday carrot cake for you. She doesn't pay taxes. She pays taxes, but not for producing and giving the carrot cake to you. So again, or even more so, we are in trouble, because we said, the carrots are not final product. Now she sells it, but they are now definitely lost. Because you pay, but she doesn't register it as this is my contribution to GDP. Right? No. Why not? 
because it is not re registered, if she would register this as business, or if she tells you, you want me to get you the carrot cake and do it myself every day, I go to the baker's shop, I buy it, I buy it there for you. I have money enough, but I don't have time to do it every day for you. So it's not going to granny, it's sold to the bakery, there she gets the carrot cake, and now we have the change picture, because now we are looking at the carrot cake that is produced huh, and sold on the market. This is the story, and this is a very important story, because there is a major shift, major change of the economic status of the product. I emphasized up to including the last lecture the difference of exchange value and use value and the importance of use value when it comes to considering what is going on, what are we doing, and I did it today as well. If you produce a car crash, meaning with a car crash you produce something that is relevant for the market, this has a different status and we are not looking at the use value but we are looking at the economic value. This is the case here again. The use value is important. Don't crash your car because it's good for the economy, but look at the car and what you can do with it and leave it undamaged. Don't look at the economic status of your action or non-action. Here we look at the exchange value. Still enjoy the carrot cake. In this way you look at the use value. But economically important is what is the economic position of this good. It is changing from a privately exchanged good to a commodity. This happens with the entire process of industrialization and the development of markets, market economies, that things are increasingly moved to the market activity. They are produced for the market and they are exchanged on the market. Anything else is not really of interest. Of course it matters in real terms. But in terms of the economy, it does not matter. It's only relevant if it is produced for the market and uh, consumed or bought, sold on the market. This is important as well in terms of the development that we have the strive looking at the, in the, the growth of GDP in a way this paradox really doesn't produce any value economically. So to move the economy on, we move the stuff to the commodification. This is important. This is when it counts for the economic process. Next point, the arts. I said we are talking about this a little bit. And then the question is as well, how do we define actually what we are talking about. Now we don't really know the quality of the music, but we can assume this looks very professional. Most likely this person is better than this beginner there. We are probably, probably on, on pretty safe ground. But looking at this person, we are not. Because we don't know, in terms of age, they are probably more or less the same. We don't know really the quality of the music. And even if it's just the age is about the same, you may be 
10 years younger than he is and to be much, much better in playing the violin. Now, assumptions, we always have assumptions. We assume that this is a professional violinist somewhere in a concert hall, where you go, where you pay your ticket, entrance fee, and that is a business. We assume that this person plays the violin and gets some money collecting here. This is obvious employment. Employment as orchestra, violinist or soloist, playing the instrument, getting paid for the job, for doing the job. Certain conditions, certain working times, certain other conditions. You cannot simply play what you want, but there is a program and you have to stick to this. Employment, meaning it is part of the official process of production and exchange. He gets money from it. At least we can assume this. Busking, it is not doing this for money, but you get money for it. Is this employment or is this relevant for the GDP or not? I see a no, which is in general terms okay, but we have to be careful. And then we see we have to look at the legal conditions of things, we have to look at the framework. Sometimes it is actually illegal to do it, just to stand somewhere and do this masking. So, as simple as that, you are in trouble. If you do, that may be one feature, one way. There is another one, which is actually, it is legal, but it is regulated, and you can only do it during certain hours, you can only do it in one place, one day, and you have to move to another, the second day. So it is a regulated activity. Employment or not employment? Not as such, not just the existence of a regulation matters, but it is relevant if this person in this case, not being employed, but as freelancers, as freelancer, working for his, for himself, is doing this in order to make money and has to pay taxes from this. It's, it's if you want, this is a, is a registered business. Even if it is difficult not to say impossible, to see how much money does he get. Because if you throw one yuan or 100 yuan into this thing, you won't get a receipt. And he won't write down, okay, got one, got 100. There is a matter of trust still in place. But you are obliged to pay. Appearance, definitely no business. The essence may be different. It may be different what exactly the regulation, the relevant regulation is. GDP or not? This little fellow there. Of course not. But still we should think about the relevance in a context, in the context of the economy. 
this child, it's extremely unlikely that it is productive in terms of making music and selling it. Extremely unlikely. Although we should not say it's impossible. It may be actually that this is part of an advertisement spot and even the parents don't get it, but uh, even, even the child doesn't get it, but the parents get money for employing this child. Bring it to the place and making it part of a productive, of an economic process in the strict sense. This is one thing, and it happens. Many, in, in many cases, you find some things made for business. It's illegal, it's not child work. Um, it's, it's just a thing where you need a child, there are strict limitations how you can do it, but it is part, immediate part of the economic process. And in this way, it is immediate part in terms of GDP. But there's another dimension to it, another possible dimension to it, namely that you have this just as kids play, child's play. For whatever reason, the child has the idea it's nice to scratch a little bit on the violin, or the parents say, actually, it would be good, you will enjoy it, start early, just do it. It may be as well a strategy of the parents to say, actually we employ somebody to train this child to be at some stage in his life, in his life her life, a famous violinist, or not a famous but make money out of it. Again, what the child does is not relevant, but it would be part of the professional educational process, training process, and in this way it would be at least relevant for the GDP development. If it's simply a household activity, it is not. If it is part of a larger story where it is intentionally made, produced, in order to contribute to the economic process, we have at least to be a little bit careful. But these are actually the simple questions, very easy. It's a little bit difficult because we look at aggregates. We are not looking at the individual case, but we are looking at what happens to the children in China playing the violin. Is it done just for fun, or is it part of a kind of professional process? Now we come to the more difficult question. How many gigabytes has a horse? This is a very difficult question, and it is a more or less new question. And it is something that is important to understand, although we don't have a proper answer yet. It is what happens in the new economic development. And what do we do if we have a question like this? We are looking at the different elements and we are actually deconstructing what it is about. And then we start at the end and have a horse or three horses. So this is clear what a horse is. It's very straightforward and we can answer it. We may need a couple of horses more, depending on actually these questions of gigabyte. Horses, it's, it's very easy to imagine what a horse is, but with gigabyte, it's a little bit more difficult. 
Gigabyte is something I don't really know what it is. It's something every computer has, and it's the amount of data that can be stored and processed. But I never saw a gigabyte. I saw horses, but I never saw a gigabyte. I don't know if you saw them. I know that they are somewhere in these machines, but I, I, I never saw it. I never saw a picture of a gigabyte, so it seems to be something difficult to imagine. But so what we can do is actually we look at where are these gigabytes, we look at the computer and say, okay, this is gigabytes. And as it is huge, it probably is many gigabytes. But still we would have the problem, although I think that it's actually not so many gigabytes, it's a very old machine, but to get this into a horse is difficult. So we need more horses to put all these gigabytes or the one gigabyte into the horse or horses. Now there is a solution to it, at least a partial solution. The performance of cars had been measured and still sometimes it is used as such in horsepower. Hooray! We got it. We look at the performance of cars, and then we have at least the horses and something together, and then we have to know something. Sometimes we, we have to know some few things before we can answer the question. That according to the Economist, the journal, the newspaper, a high-end car, and high-end does not mean an extremely high-end car, but it's what, what we can use, what we can buy. A high-end car, for instance, has the digital horsepower of 20 personal computers and generates 25 gigabytes of data per hour of grind. This is amazing, isn't it? A car drives, brings us from A to B. This is the idea. But I once heard, the, it's actually a couple of years ago already, today it changed again. I once heard this figure that a car today has more information technology, has more electronics in it than the first manned shuttle to the moon. Now look at this, what a difference. What a difference it is, what you did not need before to fly to the moon, you need now for your car. And actually the interesting part of it is, and this is why I say we don't really know where this is going, is that a car produces something. And a car does not produce the pollution. It does not produce only the service of transporting you or a good or something from A to B. But it produces something that is not relevant to the car. Gigabyte. What is the relevance for driving of driving in terms of the performance of the car? Now you can discuss this in, techn in, in technological terms and then it's something beyond my capacity to understand anyway as the entire world. Uh, but there are different parts of this production. The part of it is relevant for driving 
because of the control system of the petrol pump and, and the clock, how it's measured. This is all done electronically. But there is as well something else. Part of these data, especially high-end cars, are going to the satellite. You think the satellite is going to you, give you the information where, how to go from here to there. Forget it. You give the information to the satellite and to the system where you are going. It's much more interesting. This is a side effect that they tell you where to go or how to go there. The real effect is, interesting effect economically, is for instance, what is the traffic situation there? There are 100 cars standing in traffic jam. So I redirect the traffic and I sell this information. I redirect the traffic to another route. It is happening. For instance, you can buy GPS systems. I don't know if you still have to buy them or if it's automatically included. No? But at some stage you have to buy them. You have had the basic version, just telling you how to get from A to B. And then you have had an extended version, paying a little bit more, telling you there is a building site, roadworks ahead, there is a traffic jam due to an accident, giving you additional information. Depending on all of us driving, sending the data there, and somebody making profit out of it, making a business out of it. How all this works is still developing. We know some parts, we don't know everything. Baidu, search engines, all these search engines use the data we produce to enhance the product. Even if you only buy a book using your internet service, it gives additional information. Even it gives, may be part of it, students in Shansha like this and that product. They dis detest another kind of product. It's information for the market. It's relevant for the economic process. It's not only what you buy, but it is as well the knowledge I need, I want to have when it comes to what actually is happening. How do I move things on in the entire context of the economic process? It's called big data. The amount of data is something we cannot really imagine, leaving aside that we cannot imagine a gigabyte. We never saw one. But I heard recently, I forgot it again, it's, when, when I started with computers, it was KB. There was nothing beyond KB. And now, actually, when they started with gigabyte, I said, wow, this is... And then somebody came up with terabyte, I think. Well, I thought, this, this, this is just unbelievable what they do. Especially if the, these things are getting smaller and smaller, coming back to this. Products are getting smaller, but in actual fact, they are getting larger. Because to have a ter terabyte with the old system, you probably would need a classroom. Today, you put it on a little ship. That's it. It's getting larger in terms of the capacity. And I heard recently, as I said, it's not terabyte anymore. Terabyte is small. They are going beyond that. I think there are already three levels beyond this. This is not for us or private use, but it is on the market. All this is combined. The capacities of calculations are there. You don't have YouTube. You have another server for, for music. I know that. Um, there are different services. They all put the data together. We have WeChat here. 
the amount of data that is transported and that is transported to somebody else. Not if you send me something, if we are chatting, but what is going on with them. This is relevant and this is going into some places of GDP and sometimes it is not clear. And this is the new challenge actually when we look at what happens. If you want, coming back to the beginning and looking at the GDP as such and the want the striving for GDP should grow. Growing GDP is good. I mentioned some absurdities, I mentioned some problems that go hand in hand with it, where we have actually negative effect in terms of use value, but positive effects in terms of exchange value. We produce something, but we damage the environment. These are problems, obvious problems, but as well there are other problems, other dimensions to analyze economic dimension of GDP. This article, I think it is already or it will be soon on Blackboard. I put it there into the resources. What China, uh, China's GDP numbers don't tell us from the China, uh, China Daily, a small article. And basically, it makes out four points. And basically, we already talked about it in different contexts, some, of, some today, some previous times. If you look at the meaning you want the substance, the essence of GDP growth, you can say, of course, this is good, steady growth, this is excellent, because it's really a huge jump, and we have a little bit of problem here, because it's still growing, but compared with this, perhaps we can make it a little bit clearer, compared with this, it's not a huge growth. So we may have here the 14%, and we may have here 3%, which is, of course, a huge drop when it comes to looking at the growth rate. It's 3%, just taking figures, 3%, what did I say, against 15 or something. There's a huge difference, meaning it slowed down, it massively slowed down. But at the end, and then we can look for the proper figures, at the end, you still have, at this stage, more here with 3% than you have here with 14%. Meaning, looking at GDP, at the growth rate is relative. And we relate it not only to what is produced, more is produced, but we relate it as well to the point of departure, to the level of departure. If we start at a high level, the growth rate will be lower, but the meaning of it is still higher. You can simply imagine it, and you can simply visualize it, go back to the exponential growth. And there we have had the chess board, and we put one corn of rice on the first field, and we put two on the second. This is a major change. It's doubling from where we started. This is really a huge change. 
if you look at the percentage. Now we have the third one. There are already two on it transferred from here, and we add one more, which still makes a substantial difference. But at the same time, the chain is smaller. Here it's doubling, here it's less than doubling. And this is, if you go through it, what happens with the exponential growth as well, it is coming to a huge amount, overall amount, but at the same time, every change it makes, every difference it makes, is getting smaller and smaller. So what appears to be negative, you have a falling, decreasing growth rate. You may still say it is negative. It is not what we want to go for. But you have to consider what it actually means. And going from 15 to 3 percent, does not necessarily mean that you lose the difference. You have to look at where you start. And if you look the recent history of China, the economy, economic history, you find exactly this. There was kind of starting not from zero, but from a very low level, a huge development, and then it slowed down. But it actually still is a huge growth and huge change. We will continue on this then in the next part.